Welcome to Edison TV. I'm Trinity Chavez, and we're here today to explore the collaboration between Edison Client Context Therapeutics and a 135-year-old Italian pharmaceutical company, the Menarini Group. Together, they have embarked on a mission to combine two breast cancer therapies that they hope will improve outcomes in patients with advanced or metastatic hormone-driven breast cancer. Because despite progress and success, some cancers remain incurable. The long-term survivability of breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancers is low once the disease has metastasized and moved beyond its initial site. Some treatments can impair these patients' ability of leading a normal life. Pain, fatigue, hair loss, and skin discoloration are not uncommon side effects of current therapeutic treatment options used to combat later stage disease. There remains a significant unmet need to improve how these cancers are treated. This year in the U.S. alone, the American Cancer Society estimates there will be more than 400,000 new cases of breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancers. Context Therapeutics is a company on a mission to provide treatments that change the lives of patients affected by breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancers. And today we'll find out why CEO Martin Lair and the Chief Executive Officer and Experience Dealmaker of the Menarini Group, Elshin Barker, believe their collaboration could revolutionize the hormone-driven breast cancer landscape. Welcome, Marty and Elshin. Very good to have you both with us today. Pleasure. Thank you. So, Marty, we'll start with you. For new viewers, can you give us a brief overview of Context Therapeutics lead drug candidate, Onexar, and why it's different from others? Absolutely. Uh, and thanks for having me. Context Therapeutics is a women's oncology company, meaning we're focused on breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancer. ONA-XR is our oral progesterone receptor antagonist to address women, uh, and in some cases, men with breast cancer, who have progesterone receptor positive breast, ovarian, or endometrial cancer. ONA-XR is an oral progesterone receptor antagonist. It is unique among other antiprogestins that have been developed to date, and importantly, no uh, antiprogestins have been approved by the FDA for cancer. So this does have the potential uh, to be a first-in-class agent or uh, cancer that is progesterone receptor driven. The drug works primarily by two mechanisms. Uh, one, it prevents progesterone receptor dimerization in the face of progesterone binding to progesterone receptor. And the second mechanism uh, is also rather unique. Uh, ONA-XR blocks post-translational modification of progesterone receptor which means when there is no progesterone present, sometimes progesterone receptor can get uh, activated independent of progesterone. And so our drug blocks that mechanism as well. So this duality uh, of antagonism is really important to how uh, our drug works uh, and really gets us um, interested in its potential to address these potentially devastating cancers. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that answer. Now, turning to Elshin, the company that you head, Menarini, is a leading pharma and diagnostics business with products available in over 140 different countries. Central to your strategy in your oral selective estrogen receptor degrader, Elisa Strand, how does it work and why are your results with Elisa Strand so promising? Thank you, uh, Trinity, again. So, um, uh, as you said, um, these oral uh, selective estrogen receptor degraders are um, a, kind of a new future of, um, of the old SERPs. And, um, and our product was the first to show a statistically significant improvement on progression-free survival over the uh, standard of care that are being used today, the endocrine treatments. The, the way, I mean, I think Martin beautifully explained, you know, what could a progesterone mechanism could, could do. In our case, these, um, you know, uh, these uh, endocrine agents, as you can see from their name, are working by degrading the estrogen receptor. But um, what is very interesting and different about Elisestran is that uh, it is the only CERN that has got also CERN property, which actually means that it also has an antagonistic effect. And what does that mean? That actually gives us another mechanism of action where you also block the remaining estrogen receptors. And with that two mechanisms coming together, then of course, the, um, when the cell cannot be attached, then the estrogen is not going to uh, be allowed to uh, signal the cell to uh, multiply and grow. So that is the, the, the way our drug is working and how it is different also 
from the other uh, oral certs. And now coming to what is exciting is that this is the first oral cert that showed, uh, as I said, statistical significance uh, on progression-free survival uh, over uh, current standard of care. And, uh, and this, um, the Emerald study, where we uh, looked at LSSTRAN in a monotherapy setting, had two primary endpoints. One was all comers, so the overall population, and the other was uh, ESR1 mutation. And uh, LSSTRAN showed statistical significance in both all comer population and then the SR1 mutation. And why is the SR1 mutation important? The CDK446 inhibitors used together with aromatase inhibitors in the first line are actually serving patients well. What happens is the problem afterwards when resistance builds in this first line usage. When you come to second and third line, you know, you one of these resistances that's very important is the SR1 mutation. And this one and some other resistances that you are able to um, you know, um, actively work against is what uh, made LSSTRAN is such a strong you know, option for uh, pa pa patients suffering from um, uh, endocrine positive, uh, HER2 negative, uh, advanced or metastatic breast cancer in second and third line after CDK46 inhibitors. I would also add that this is also a pill that brings convenience over uh, existing injectable CERT. Okay, and we're gonna talk more about that in a little in a little bit, but as I understand it, the results from Ellis and Strand phase three Emerald were quite pros promising, as you said, with both co-primary endpoints in the trial being met. Furthermore, Ellis and Strand appeared to have a particularly strong response in patients with a genetic mutation known as the ESR1 mutation. Now, the significance of the mutation seems to have been underlined by the recently announced failures of Sanofi's and Roche's oral CERDs. And in these two trials, participants were not selected for the ESR1 mutation. Therefore, the question is, would patients with the mutation be the most likely target market for the Onexar plus LSS strand combination? And would this reduce the overall market opportunity? So uh, as you said, um, and I alluded to the ASR1 mutation is a very important uh, resistance that builds. And uh, it's important to have a strong agent that can deal with that. However, as we uh, also, as it was published in Journal of Clinical Oncology, those who are not harboring an ESR1 mutation are also benefiting versus the standard of care, and um, even if it's not as pronounced. And then, as I said, you're also giving the oral convenience for many patients uh, remembering that going to hospitals is a problem, you know, injections is uh, painful. So there are advantages, um, you know, on top of the positive benefit uh, the product, uh, you know, uh, provides for these uh, patients. But coming to your question about uh, some of the failures, so um, so in in you know uh, indeed those trials did not have the ESR1 mutation subgroup as a primary endpoint. But when we looked at ESMO, when these trial um, outcomes were uh, shared, uh, the Sanofi trial I think had around 40% ESR1 mutation uh, patients. And Roche had 39%. So in the Emerald trial, that was 45%. So in terms of the presentation of that group, so um, it was quite morally similar. So um, as I said, uh, the unique mechanism of uh, LSSTRAN is such that it is an oral CERT, but it also has certain properties. It is also the only CERT that crosses blood-brain barrier. So we don't have a differentiated product. Um, now, coming to our trial with uh, ONAXR, which we are really excited about, uh, we will be looking at both ESR1 mutated and non-mutated patients, and then we will see which patients in this combination will, uh, will most benefit from this combination. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Elsha. Now, I want to turn to Marty. Now, Context has an ongoing phase two trial in second, third line HR positive for two negative MVC in combination with an injectable CERD, Fulvestrant. Will you pursue both combination trials, OnXR plus Fulvestrant and OnXR plus Elevestrant simultaneously, or will you prioritize research? 
uh, resources based on readouts from trials? Well, we obviously value our relationship with Mandarini Group, and we think not only highly of the company, but also of their investigational agent, Ellis Estrem. And so uh, we very much are, are excited about our Alona trial with, with Mandarini. However, we do see a broad use case potential for Ona XR across the various anti-estrogens that are already approved, and in many cases, generic. And so Fulvestrin uh, is one of those agents. It is currently the standard of care in second, third line mesdac breast. It may be replaced by ls over time, uh, but we don't know if that will be the case. And so we think it's very important to hedge our bet, so to speak, uh, evaluate the drug broadly, and then follow the data over time and see where the data is best and most promising, and then consolidate our resources at that time. And given that Fulvis Trend is off patent, like you said earlier, what incremental benefits need to be seen from using oral certs to improve the chances of receiving a regulatory nod? So I can't speak this directly, oral certs and the potential to, to surpass uh, Fulvis Trend. Uh, in our case, uh, we would look to see if our drug, Onexar, could improve in our Fulvestrin trial, uh, Fulvestrin, and in the case of the Elisestrin trial, Elisestrin. Uh, we think somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30% improvement on underlying activity would be meaningful uh, for patients. And so we look forward to running these phase two trials, to generating the data, and ultimately having a discussion with various key opinion leaders as well as regulatory agencies about uh, what data they would be looking for, what's important to them, what sort of data we would need to show in a phase three trial uh, and the statistics to support that, uh, to ultimately support regulatory approval in this indication. Perfect, and you, you touched on it, but could you elaborate a little bit more as to what you hope the next steps are going to be after the phase one B stoked to on XR plus LSS strand trial? We obviously hope that the trial is a, a success. Uh, and so positive data uh, could mean a future phase three trial where we would evaluate uh, the potential of the combination in a, a randomized uh, clinical trial. And so if that is ultimately a success, then you would envision uh, a regulatory submission and ultimately, uh, with some luck, a drug approval uh, and launch. Uh, and we think that would be really important, but we certainly believe that there's room to improve uh, upon that. We can always do better for cancer patients. Uh, and so that's what we seek to do as a company and through the collaboration with Menorini. And you sort of uh, touched on this, but I, can you elaborate more as to what you hope the next steps would be after the phase 1B Stoke 2 on XR Plus LSS strand trial? Uh, yes, we are very excited about um, you know, this approach. Uh, I think uh, what obviously um, uh, context therapeutics is, uh, is, is driving this trial and, um, and uh, what they shared with us in terms of timelines is that um, uh, in, the, in the coming 12 months, we will be seeing uh, phase one results. And also I think we will be um, you know, a, a good way uh, in, the, uh, in the phase two as well. So um, from our side, um, we're working on you know, um, bringing LSS trans to a breast cancer patients in, um, in different ways that, um, you know, for instance, including earlier lines, we discussed today about late lines after CDK for six, second, third line, when the patients are in metastatic stage. And uh, but the earlier lines are also very important, as you alluded to in the beginning. Breast cancer affects a lot of people, and uh, so therefore those are trials we're looking at. We're also looking at combination therapies, and for us this trial is unique in the sense that this is bringing another agent, a progesterone targeting agent, which also, you know, for some patients could be very interesting. And, uh, and we're very happy and excited to see the results. So, um, so this is all, you know, very exciting. And, uh, and I look forward to the results, honestly. Some promising news ahead, hopefully. Well, great 
Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you to everyone for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about Context Therapeutics and this collaboration with Menarini, all of Edison's research on the company is available on our website. Thanks again, everyone. Until next time.